prove that if p of z has a zero of order m at z naught and q of z has a zero of order n at z naught and the product pq has a zero of order m plus n at z naught this should be a pretty straightforward proof so proof so suppose i guess i'll write it suppose p of z has a zero of order m at z naught and q of z has a zero of order n at z naught and the natural thing to do is look at the product so then set h of z equal to p of z times q of z and then by hypothesis so since p of z has a zero of order m at z naught so since p of z has a zero of order m at z naught that means there exists a function we'll call it f1 polynomial function such that p of z is equal to z minus z naught to the m times f of 1 of z where f1 of z naught is not equal to 0. Likewise, since q of z has a 0 of order n at z naught, I won't write it this time, but likewise, there exists a function, polynomial function, f2, such that q of z is equal to z minus z naught to the n times f sub 2 of z, where f sub 2 of z naught is not equal to 0. So this, this is what it means for p to have a 0 of order m, and this is what it means for q to have a 0 of order n. So now let's look at the product again. So then h of z is equal to, well, it's p times q, so it's going to be z minus z naught to the m, f sub 1 of z, so that's p of z, and then q is z minus z naught to the n, f sub 2 of z. So we can rewrite this as z minus z naught, and then adding the exponents, we get m plus n, and then we have these guys here, f1 of z and f2 of z. Rewriting this a little bit further, this is equal to z minus z naught to the m plus n times, let's call it, um, let's be fancy, let's call it alpha of z, <laughs> where alpha of z is equal to f1 of z times f2 of z, so we do have a polynomial, and moreover, we have that alpha of z naught well, that's equal to f1 of z0 times f2 of z0. And this is certainly not equal to 0, because f1 of z0 is not equal to 0, and f2 of z0 is not equal to 0. So we've written h of z as z minus z0 to the m plus n times a polynomial alpha such that alpha of z0 is not equal to 0. That's precisely what it means for h to have z0 be an a zero of order m plus n. So eight. So z naught is a zero of order m plus n for h. So pretty easy proof. I kind of rushed through it because there's so much writing. Um, I hope this helps.